The recent shootings on Danzig Street have again raised the issue of gun violence in Toronto, and we've heard a lot of discussion from people about how we should deal with it. But for one man, the solution is simple. Make art. Sean Morissette is a Toronto-based artist who goes by the name A.K.A. Subliminal. Seven years ago, after 15-year-old Jane Kriba was fatally shot, he created a piece of interpretive sound art that I'd like to p- play a piece for you now. But just a quick note, you may find it a little jarring. The name is E.G. and I want to become a youth pastor. I'm going to be a doctor when I grow up. Criminologist. Uh, engineer. That was a brief clip from the interpretive sound art piece created by Toronto artist, a.k.a. Subliminal. He joins me in studio now to talk about the role that art and artists can play today in the wake of these multiple shootings across Toronto in recent weeks. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I'm sure the clip that we just heard stopped a few people in their tracks, but what was it you were trying to say in this piece? Well, essentially, um, the piece, when you listen to it in in entirety, I understand that it's a bit jarring. Yep. And it was meant to be jarring, and there was no simple way to, to, to sugarcoat nor hide uh, what is happening to our youth. This piece is essentially um, a soundscape of youth, our youth here in Toronto, describing uh, their dreams and aspirations and what they'd like to be, and their voices being cut short by the sound of a gunshot. Um, as the piece progresses, I did put in my own hopes for the future, which is eventually... Um, as the piece progresses towards the end, you hear uh, their aspirations eventually drowning out the sounds of the gunshot and mm-hmm. the sounds of the gunshots fading to silence. And I remember asking one young boy who couldn't have been uh, older than maybe three years old or two, what do you want to be? And he just yelled out into the microphone, peace. Yeah. And that's how I ended it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, the, the piece, is, it is disturbing. Yeah. And um, I, I feel like, Make having made that piece seven years ago, um, and then listening to it now, um, and, and and not thinking at as a, look, listening to it as a producer, I'm listening to it now. Just you know, so just taking it in. It it's probably even more powerful now than ever to me, and and it was very disturbing for me to, to to create and and keep repeating and editing, and it was not easy. But it's none of this is easy, and I think that um, the piece is indicative of what what we're facing. I think probably what makes people feel the most uncomfortable is the the silence after yes. the gunshots. So, yes. talk a little bit about that and what it was that you were trying to put into people's heads when they heard that. Well, there's there's a producer that I've worked with. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm an entertainer, actor, motivational speaker, beatboxer uh, with a degree in architecture. I do a lot of things. But there's one gentleman that I worked with named Clarence Ford, who, if I'm correct, is actually in London, who helped with the opening ceremony as a, as a choreographer and producer for the show. Um, basically, he introduced he showed me the, the power of silence in theater. Mm-hmm. When 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 actors are, are acting and they've got that big dramatic point and then this silence and making people feel that silence is a sound and so after you hear each shot you do hear that silence through all my pieces you often hear the sounds of a second hand ticking which is a metaphor that the fact that um time waits on no one it it continues it's it's the world's the universe's metronome if you will um, but this is the first piece that I ever created where the metronome or the, the second hand at, at certain points does actually stop. Hmm. And so what do you think uh, uh, the impact can be of art in um, dealing with, the, you know, the kind of stresses and uh, and fears that we're having as a result of what's happening in Toronto? Well, I think um, using the arts, uh, I mean, first of all, it's, it's, it's what I use to relate to, to the youth today. And um, I recently um, completed a two week a two week long workshop working with a, a, um, an organization called RRS, which stands for Redemption Reintegration Services, which is funded by the TDSB. And essentially, I was using arts to uh, interact and motivate and and get the these students who typically are are um, all pretty much for the most part all expelled cannot re- return back to school, and using the arts to get them to explore different different ideas, different thoughts i.e. opportunity. If I give a, a student who, who's maybe reading at a grade five level and he or she is, a, is maybe 16 or 17, um, giving them a camera and saying, take a photo of something that reflects opportunity. And their reaction is, well, what does opportunity look like? Mm-hmm. And I say, well, you tell me. And we go on to Google and we look that up. And another part of their brain gets activated and things 
um, are, are discovered and revealed through the arts, through one photo, the way that they alter it. I let them know if you take the, 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 the photo from a certain angle, if you make it black and white, everything you do is the equivalent of, of a brush stroke. On a, on a canvas. There has to be meaning behind it. And the things that were revealed in these pieces were absolutely phenomenal that came out. And these pieces I then took back to their teachers and said, here, look at what Nigel did. He drew the, the face of a slave and put everything that he thought inside the hair of the slave. And then there's one area where there was a bullet hole. And I said, Nigel, what is that bullet hole? He said, that's the part of my mind that cannot be accessed. And I said, well, if there was one person who could access it, who would that be? He said, my father. And then all of a sudden he's, he, he caught himself and said, but no, I don't like my father. And, and that told that teacher everything about that child at that moment or that young man, I should say. So I think the arts is, is, is a window. It's another window. It's another opportunity. And it's unfortunate that, um, these, you know, funding for the arts and extracurricular activities are being cut because I've seen firsthand what they do, not only with my work here in Toronto and Canada, but also in the United States and places like Atlanta, the South Bronx, and also in the UK, in areas just around London, England, that you typically would never have ever heard of. Well, I really appreciate your comments. Thank you so much for coming in. Sure. Thank you for having me. That was Toronto-based artist, a.k.a. Subliminal. The name is E.G. and I want to become a youth pastor. I'm going to be a doctor when I grow up. Criminologist. Uh, engineer. I would like to be a nurse. Gas technician. Bouncer. A children's aid worker. I want to be just a chef. A dental hygienist. Baller. Doctor. I'm top dog, yeah. I want to be... I want to be a movie star. Producer. Paramedic. Social worker. Prison. Wait, wait, let me think about it, yeah? President. Teacher. Doctor. Lawyer. Sound engineer. Singer. Say singer. Singer. I'm an electrician, baby. I'd like to be a singer, and I want. To, I'd like to be a singer, and I want to be on BET. I want to be a nurse. I don't know what I want to be. I want to be just a chef for my own restaurant. Yeah. Doctor. Doctor. Entrepreneur. Say doctor. doctor. I don't even want to be a client. I want to be the player president. A lawyer. What up, this BG? I want to be a baller and a doctor. My name is EG, and I want to become a youth pastor. Social worker for children. What? I want to be an engineer. Hairstylist. Yeah. I want to be a movie star. No idea. What do you want to be?